Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Like I said in the first message today, I want to reiterate, just in case you watch this one and not that one, I'm goofed up. I should have done a video or two videos yesterday, and instead I'm doing four videos today. So I tried to, in the first video, like pass it off like, yeah, I was kind of busy the other day, my day's kind of crisscrossed, and then I was like, you know what? No, it's it's completely and totally my fault. I could have squeezed in time to do the ministry video and the video game video if I'd really pushed for it, and I didn't. So that was my mistake, and I've got to take responsibility for it. So this is me doing it now, at the beginning of both of these messages. So Ezra, we have completed the book of Second Chronicles, and we're now in the book of Ezra, chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia, that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom, and also put it in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus king of Persia, All the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heaven has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Who is among you of all his people? May his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel. He is God, which is in Jerusalem. Now, how amazing is that for a pagan king to just up and say, By the way, you guys who worship this God, yes, he's God. So go build his house. Go back to your hometown. Now, I don't know if he was a genuine believer or not, or if he was simply trying to politically, you know, like, okay, well, let's, uh, you know, let's do something with the kingdom. Let's, you know, give these guys some land, give them their own leadership back. You would, I would tend to think, you know, why would you give a people their own leadership back? Um, that wasn't very popular back in those times, but who knows? Maybe. Just a possibility. I'm not entirely sure. But nonetheless, because the Bible says it, I know that the Lord is the one who stirred up the spirit of Cyrus. And thus, Cyrus did what he did. And it's amazing to have a leader who is hearing God's voice and following God's voice. That is an amazing thing. And that's, I, I've been reading throughout 2 Chronicles, 1 Chronicles, 2 Kings, 1 Kings, 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel, the benefit of having godly rulers, of having people over you that love God, that want to follow Him, and that really care about Him. As most of you all know, or probably have figured out simply by my accent and by my voice, I'm from the United States, and I have to say I'm not entirely convinced that we've had a ton of godly rulers in the United States as of late. I am not convinced that every single president, they're all professing Christians. I'm not convinced that they have all been real Christians, you know, devout, genuine worshipers of Jesus Christ, according to the biblical message, you know, like Jesus being the only God, the one true God. And there's, I can't really prove or disprove that. I, I, again, they profess it. They go to some kind of church. They have some kind of denomination listed. And every single president of the United States has. And say, of course, I'm not in a position, I, me, I'm not somewhere to speak to the president and be like, so, what do you really believe about Jesus? How do you really feel about the Word of God? Do you really believe that stuff? Do you follow it actively in your daily life? No, we're near in a position to do something like that. But you know what I can do? I can pray for my leaders. And even before there were any Christian leaders in the world at all, in fact, before some tyrannical Roman emperors like Nero and um, Domitian, uh, and, there, and there are others who killed multiple Christians, hundreds and even thousands of Christians. Paul said to pray for your leaders because when they when your nation's at peace you are at peace so what can you do you can pray for him if you don't have a godly leader and i the president that's coming into office he says he's a christian not entirely convinced he's a real one so what can i do i can pray for him even though i didn't vote for him i voted for the person i thought would be good but i can pray for him and to all of you Whoever's seeing this, probably mostly in the United States, but even if you're not in the United States, wherever you are on planet Earth, 
like I discussed in a previous message, God knows who your leader is. God allowed that person to be there. Even if he didn't directly appoint them, God did allow them the position of leadership. Um, so even if it's only, you know, with, with an indirectness, God allowed that person to be where they are. He knows that they're your leader. and He let them be there. So that doesn't necessarily mean they're a believer in Christ. That doesn't necessarily mean that they have your best interests at heart. But you can pray for them. You know, pray for God to guide them, to lead them, to give them wisdom, to give them and your country and yourself peace. You can pray for that. You're absolutely allowed to do that. And as far as the verse that I quoted from Paul, I'm going to let you guys look that up. As I've said so many times, Google is your friend. That can be your homework assignment for this message. I know I, I, I hate homework too. But this is all you got to do is go to Google, type in what I just said, you know, to pray for your rulers because when they have peace, you have peace. That is a paraphrase. But if you type that into Google, you will find it. And I want you guys to study and look into the Word of God and learn for yourselves. Thus, I don't always give you every single Bible reference, even when I know it. So thank you guys very much for watching. At the very end, complete failure for watching this video. I love you and God bless. Oh, that was the best.